So this, again, you're dissected. What you're looking at is the whole of the nervous system. Uh, and it's made up of a certain type of tissue. What you're actually looking at, because it's mostly the nerves, is a connective tissue covering surrounding the nerves right here. But inside, around here, right, it's made up of cells, right? It's unique in that it doesn't have any connective tissue inside it, you know, besides the outside layer right here. It's all going to be nervous tissue, right? That special kind of tissue. And in the last video, we talked about what makes up the bulk of that nervous tissue. What you can see all around here is those little dots right there, the nuclei of the glial cells. But what we're going to be talking about here are the functional type of cells, which will be the subject of most of our discussion on the nervous Next, system. We want to get into the rock stars here, right? The neurons. So we're going to talk about the different parts of it, which we've already mentioned a couple of times. We get into a little bit more detail about what those are, right? Where they're bringing in information, how they're putting it out. So the first part for terminology wise is like any other cell in your body, you have a cell, right? And this is often referred to as the soma. That's where you'll find the nucleus, a lot of the mitochondria, the ribosomes, right? Other stuff like that, right? Mitochondria, nucleus, nucleolus, very active cells, very active cells. But this is a cell body just like any other cell in your body, right? Uh, you'll they have specialized things, which we, I don't think I'm going to talk about this, but they're, they're highly active. That is, they're making a lot of protein. So you see a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum and ribosomes. You'll also have a cytoskeletal element, which will provide structure for these long processes coming off right here, these neural filaments. All right, that's the cell body. Right? Now we're just talking about the roles of these, and the role of this is to maintain the cell's health. It's also going to receive signals on it. But the main thing when you want to think of receiving signals are these extensions off, in this case, in this kind of type of cell, the cell body. Right? There's extensions that can reach out and get information from over here rather than just over here. These are the dendrites. Right? The structure of these are the dendrites. The function is to receive information, integrate that information, and maybe even store it as memory in a way we're not going to get into. But that is your dendrites receiving information, either from the environment or other neurons. Here is a dendrite. Here's the cell body. Here's another dendrite. Here is another cell trying to influence it. And this one's saying, again, they're, you know, they're trying to maybe get it to fire, right? put in all this positive signal over here. Kind of like we saw with the neuromuscular junction. Maybe that will pass. We'll talk more about this next time. But maybe you got this one down over here saying no. That's basically dampening this whole area, making it harder for this cell to pass the information. So you got all these competing inputs. And if this one's greater than this one, signal will eventually move down into this region over there. All the signals are going to be directed over to this area. And this is where we're going to decide to pass on the signal and then send it down over here. All right, so this is your, well, your axon. It's this long structure over here. Just going to conduct the impulse down to the terminal cell, right? So that would be the axon going out to the terminal lutons of your skeletal muscle that we learned about, the neuromuscular junction. So before it gets there, I said the whole neuron has to sum up the information, the total sum of its information. The summing up is going to be done at the axon hillock. Okay. And this would be referred to as the trigger zone. Right? And all these signals that it's coming around the body, these little ripples and stuff, if it's great enough, it's going to send that information on in a very all or none signal called an action potential down to the split off terminal telodendria and then end up at the terminal boutons where they are going to talk to the next cell by passing chemical signals on it. Axon hillock is the base. In this case, it's at the base of the cell leads into the axon. And that's where that signal is just going to be. This is the wiring of the nerve. Just pass that signal on 
if it's going to be passed, right? So you got dendrite, you got the cell body, dendrites, you got the axon. Those are your basic parts right there that you want to know. So for those signals going through a single neuron over here, they're going to be picked up by the dendrites, no matter what they look like, right? coming from all over the body. They could be from over here, coming in over here, and they're all kind of directed toward the cell body in this case, right? And then they'll go down the axon, right? In either case, toward the axon terminals to reach its target, right? Information flow, always going to come this way. Dendrites, and maybe the cell body, depending on the type of neuron, and then axons, axon terminals, next cell, right? Okay, so the information flow toward the cell body in these two cases, toward the axon hillock, down the axon, toward the terminal glutons. That's the way the electrical signal is going to pass through a single neuron. All right, so about that axon and about those oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells. I mentioned myelination of the oligodendrocytes and the Schwann cells. Here is an example of that. This is the Schwann cells, but oligodendrocytes are going to do something similar. And basically, here's the nucleus of the cell. It basically grows its cell membrane, wraps it around like a little hot dog bun around the hot dog of the axon here. And then it starts growing around it and around it over here, right? So this whole axon here, which is going to be the electrical conducting part, has been insulated now and protected from the outside, other electricity or something. And as we see, it's going to these spaces in between is going to allow to pass the signal much faster. But that's the basic myelin sheath. Right. It surrounds the axon as part of the cell membrane. And, you know, the cell membrane is basically a lipid bilayer, right? So this is basically this layer of kind of fat around it, insulating it. And look at the difference between the oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells. But number one, oligodendrocytes are in the central nervous system. Schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system. So what it does functionally, what the function of myelin is, is remember we talked about that action potential going down the sarcolemma, right? You had a negative charge inside the cell, and then you had that depolarization event, and then that cascade signal going down, right? So as voltage flips go down here, and then the next segment, and then the next segment, it's just moving along segments of the axon, that electrical signal. In the case of myelin, right? So this is going down like one segment, one little area at a time. With the myelination, basically, we'll talk more about exactly what it does, but it's just going to increase the speed of it because it's going to allow the signal to jump from one so-called no to another, right? Increases the speed like 20 times faster. And it's one of the things that greatly influences the speed of transduction, right? So when you remember that signal that came from your kneecap all the way, into your spinal cord and then back out to your rectus femoris to make you kick out during that knee jerk reflex. The speed of that was due to the myelination. The other interesting thing about this is this is a developmental thing, right? When you're a baby, even up till you know, when you're like 20 or something, especially certain parts of your brain uh, don't have myelination and they take a little bit longer, right? So part of like memory and stuff and part of like training and stuff is to kind of influence the level of myelination, right? So like teenagers, for instance, and young adults, some parts of their brain that are responsible for controlling impulsive behavior are not myelinated yet. And that's why they have a lot more trouble, supposedly. And if they don't get practice doing it, they may never actually build that myelination too well. But there's a factual functional difference between very young adults and you know teenagers and stuff and older people and that's why older people are so much smarter. In any case, that is myelination and we'll talk a little bit more about that next time. All right, but again, oligodendrocytes, Schwann cells, oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system and they might do a single oligodendrocyte might do several axons. And then as you move out into the periphery, a single Schwann cell is just going to myelinate one axon, like a certain segment of one axon. And a Schwann cell, when we get into it, is actually the so-called internode, and then the node is where the signal is going to jump. So those are your 
Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes and signal conduction, right? Again, let's look at the path of an electric signal within a single neuron, right? As it goes through a neuron, then passes to its final destination, right? The information flow, right, is always going to be from the dendrites through the cell body, if it's that kind of neuron. Some have their dendrites directly connected to the axon, but the input's going to be a one-way flow, right? There's going to be an input, a summation, and then an output, right? From the dendrites or cell body toward the axon terminal, right? One way, doesn't go backwards, right? Always just one way right here. So there's an input and there's an output. And I often use terms like the input into the nervous system, and then the output is this or that, right? Information flow down a single individual neuron. Okay. This could be sensor receptors or other neurons, or and the output could be other neurons or effectors, right? Muscles, glands, and stuff like that for a final output. So that's your path of a signal, right? Dendrite, cell body, axon, axon terminals. All right, we'll come back to this subject of input and output, because that'll be the basis on how we classify certain types of neurons into the functional types. All right, we'll see you next time.